Girls don't know about my secret internet nerd life. If they do, it's just embarrassing. A lot of cute down the line. I have to pretend to be a psych.
on the hour in which I die. Is, bro, none of these fucking sad cunts. We're all gonna fucking make it, bro. That's it. Ziz was who he was. He did what he wanted to do. 
but he was open and honest about things that he did. Like, he didn't say, I'm all natural. He wasn't a fake natty like these fucking guys nowadays who were like, I don't take drugs, look up to me, I'm a good role model. He didn't give a fuck. He was like, you know what, I don't want to be a fucking role model. I want to go out and have a good time, I want to go out and do this. And yes, I take steroids. And yes, I go fucking party. And yes, I do this. And yes, I'm going to climb that rock over there in my fucking underwear and do a fucking aesthetic pose and take a picture of it and post it. Why? Because I fucking want to. It's my life. Why don't I want to do it? He said, you know what? I like this. So I'm going to do this. So then he did it. And then people realized that, you know, he just didn't give a fuck. He'd go dance in the middle of a fucking a subway with no shirt on with a fucking pair of like little like boxer briefs with a fucking man purse on and a pair of sneakers. He would just dance there and fucking people would stop and they'd be like, what the fuck? And he would just be laughing his ass off because he didn't fucking care. He just didn't care. He just wanted to be himself. That was the big draw. The big draw was, if Ziz can live his own life the way he wants to live it, I can do the same thing.
You know, it's great to try to look like Z's. It's great to look up to him and say he was a, you know, he was a good guy. Or he tried to help me get through a point in my life where I didn't know what I was was doing next. And I went to the gym and trained so I could look like him. And that really helped me out with, you know, the, that part of my life. But it's not okay to look at Z's and say, he did cocaine, he did ecstasy, he partied like that, and I want to do it too. I can almost guarantee you if Z's was here today, he would tell you guys straight out, dude, this is fucked up and I made a mistake. Because you haven't learned shit yet. To those of you who still think that Z's is a horrible role model, let me ask you this. Why must role models always be virtuous? They don't have to be. The government has run this ridiculous say no to drugs campaign and spent hundreds of millions on it. And people laugh at it. It doesn't do any good. On the other hand, Z's, through his example, has probably done more to discourage careless recreational drug use, YOLO lifestyle, than any of those drug campaigns. So the example that Z set in a positive fashion by transforming his physique and his life is great. But even more than that, his flaws, his mistakes have helped people avoid following him in his footsteps. In that respect, I think he makes a fabulous and perfect role model showing both the good and the bad together. Everyone's human and he showed that. Listen a little. Is that holding your son? Shit. Oh shit. 
The thing with Ziz is I have both positive and negative views of the guy, to be honest. And I think he's really interesting because this is someone who didn't actually accomplish anything in any sport or bodybuilding or anything else. And yet, just through the internet, as an internet persona, he 
built such a massive fan base. Ziz, Z Y W Z or some shit like that. Is that even a name? What nationality is this kid? A few things I want to say. I'm fucking acidic. Haters gonna hate. It's not Ziz. Haters gonna hate. No, it's not natural. It looks disgusting. Too ripped. It's not ZYZZ. Well, you troll Ziz, man. That's like defeating God. It's fucking Z. Defeating God, bro. God is here, bruh. Now it's time to announce the winners. Frosty, good job, bruh. You did alright. Nikki, you're a hot bitch. I'd possibly let you smash me. Possibly. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you're all gonna know. None of you will ever amount to me. You mad, bruh? I do think the guy had a nice physique. I think he had an aesthetic impressive physique by any standards. Obviously not pro bodybuilding, but I don't think that's what he was looking for. But to the average person walking down the street, they would say, wow, that guy has a fucking nice body. It's the average Joe walking down the street. I don't think anybody would question that. I think with the hard training and all the partying and the street drugs, he probably needed the amount of gear that he used just to recover from all of it. Because let's be honest, this guy partied his ass off in addition to training his ass off. You everything you'll ever need And I'll find a way to turn you into a monster Me and you, we can rule the world Cause no one's gonna mess with me, I'm a monster I'll give you everything you'll ever need And I'll find a way to turn you into a monster And I think the one thing I actually do like was that the guy just really didn't seem to care what anybody thought of him.
Steve. Still sick. I think the negatives, though, I don't like the idea that it does promote that whole YOLO idea of dying young, partying hard, dying young. I don't think that is necessarily a positive message. But on the other hand, I've seen so many hundreds and hundreds of young men tell me that Ziz inspired them to get into lifting, and even though maybe they don't agree with the, the YOLO lifestyle, that without him motivating them, they might not have ever gotten into training. And so that's what got them started. So when I see somebody who has made thousands of young men get up off the couch and start lifting weights, I kind of have to respect that. And that's something a lot of guys who have accomplished something in a sport haven't achieved. I know some amazing athletes, but yet they haven't motivated people to change for the positive. So you got to give him that. You can't take that away from him.
and in his case, I think the sad part is that he partied too hard. It cost him his life, and he's gone. And the real tragedy there is not necessarily that. It is tragic that we lost a 22-year-old young man, but that his outreach might have grown, and if he got 5,000 young men to start lifting, maybe if his outreach had grown, he might have gotten 50,000 or 100,000 young guys to get up off their ass and get in the gym and improve themselves. And I think it's sad that he died before he got that message across to a larger audience. And I think that's the real tragedy with it, because I think that is the most positive influence that he had in all of this was that he got a lot of guys into the gym, which is to me something that I would love to personally do myself. If I could get tens of thousands of young men to get off their ass and get in the gym, I would count that as a massive success. And he did that. So am I admiring? Yeah, I'm admiring. I'm admiring for the fact that he accomplished a goal that I personally would like to accomplish myself. You get a scoop of your protein, just like that. And you put that on the bread. So have your Lebanese bread. And it's a kebab with protein in it. You know, I think it was late 2009, and I've been working out for about six months. I was browsing Facebook, doing my usual work, and um, I stumbled upon this page. And at the time, it was and Babel as a display thing. And I'm just looking at them like, holy shit! This guy looks insane, like, I was looking into my friends, like, check out this guy, get a load of this guy. It was around a similar time that I became a misker, and I'm on the misker scrolling around, lo and behold, he pops up as a Simply Shredder video. So I'm like, that's that guy from Facebook. So fast forward about a year and a half, I get a text message, I'm sitting in class, I get a text message, I check my phone. And um, someone's like, oh, we bro, check out this page. And I'm in a computers class, so straight away I log in my Facebook, check out this page, and bang! This is put up one of my videos. Because this is who I consider the biggest sick guy. He's put up one of my videos, and you know, I couldn't get to smile. I was sitting there in class with just the biggest grin on my face. Like, where, oh, you know, I, just, I was happy. Because um, regardless of whether people admit it or not, this has affected this whole generation. This is, this, you know, there's Generation X, there's Generation Y, gener X, Y, Z, um, Baby Boomers, whatever you want to call them. But this generation will forever be known as the Ziz Generation. Because, you know, I got a question in my form spring and someone's like, bro, I'll be telling the story of Ziz to my grandchildren. You know? Like, bro, you may have passed on, but your legacy will live on forever. I know, you know. See something funny? Look on the wall. You see those gold gym stickers and the hole in the wall? Me and Chesper had a fight one day, and I put his uh, he he pushed me and we almost but we broke the wall. We were fighting over 
alcohol what I took my fucking alcohol so Oh yeah, the holiness as well. Oh, that's right. Um, from the top of my memory, I think um I needed to borrow, I need to borrow hair wax or as or hair strain or something like that. And um, I, mean, I can't remember or, or a wipe or an alcohol wipe or something. I can't remember. And he wouldn't give it to me. Like he had heaps. Oh, he didn't have heaps, but like he had a few. And I'm like, bro, just just give it to me, man. Come on, I always do everything for you. And he's like, oh fuck. Oh, I'm not, I'm not giving it to you, you get your own. I just just been a cocky little cunt. And then um and then yeah, he didn't he didn't give it to me, so I'm just like fuck this man, just, I'm not gonna let my little brother fucking step over me. So I just went up to him, pushed him out of the way and grabbed the wipe and started walking out of the room. And then he jumped out of his chair and came at me. <laughs> he jumped out of his chair and came at me like he just fucking he tackled me and he like tackled me to the wall. They're like, what the fuck are you doing? You really wanna go me, you know I'll drop you like he knows I was stronger than him as well, so that's a funny thing. I, I looked at him and I laughed, and then I'm like, all right, let's do it. And I, I, I fucking jumped on him, and we started wrestling and punching each other and laying into each other. And I got him in a headlock, and then I smashed his head through the wall. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, he was in a lot of pain. Like, I fucking I smashed his eyebrow ring on his face. It was bleeding, and his lip was, like, really sore. <laughs> and then, um... And then I let him go because I felt really, really bad. Like, I felt, I felt bad. Like, I'm like, fuck, I should have just let him hit me. I just left, you know, being fucking the mature one. And, um, yeah, and then um, I, I let him go. And he just looked at me. And he got really, really pissed off. And he just spat on me. Like, he spat in my face. <laughs> he actually spat in my face because he was angry. Like, he, he knew that he couldn't take me down. Because physically, I, I'm, like, in a fight, I'm, I'm, I'm more skillful and I was stronger. So, just, like, he took the beating and... I apologized, he spat on me and I, I left him at that, I'm just like, I just let him spit on me and I walked out. <laughs> and then after, like the whole day was really, really awkward, like we were walking around to the kitchen and every time he'd make a meal, he wouldn't look at me, and, yeah, he was he was so mad. You've never seen as mad in your life, he was mad, man, he was fucking mad. And he was like, every time he was in the kitchen, like making a meal and I'd walk past to just turn his head and pretend I wasn't there. And then just out of nowhere, like, End of the next day, he just comes up to me, comes in my room, and he goes, I'm over being fucking awkward with you, man. Let's just fucking shake hands, it's all over. I'm sorry. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry too. And we hugged, and then we had a laugh about it. <laughs> it was good. Brotherly love. Well, here we go. As this, I'm kicking like dumbbell pushes. Oh, oh. As you guys know, well, he was a love-hate sort of person when he was alive, back on the music, back in his videos. And, you know, not everyone fucking liked what he did and saw the value in what he did. And Like, I'll tell you some stories. Like, we used to go to festivals together. One festival I still remember, two weeks before we went to Thailand, these three guys jumped as and jumped my mate Aiden from the back of behind him and started punching into him, like bashing him for no reason. But as and Aiden fought him off and then the security came. Is that any way to fucking live life? 
not being able to fucking go to a festival that you enjoy with your mates, with your girls, to listen to the music, to have fun, and you got to worry about fucking dickhead pieces of shit trying to fucking jump you and punch you just to just to get a name for themselves, just just so they can be like, hey, I'm the guy who fucking knocked out Ziz, I'm the guy who fucking broke chest bar's jaw. You know what I mean? It's fucking pathetic. It's fucking sad. And you know what? And it got to Az as well. It got to him. He. He was too scared to walk by himself. He was too scared to go to shopping centers by himself. That's what you people don't understand. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he was just a normal guy and all this fucking got to him. And as much as I hate to say it, this whole Ziz thing, it got to him in the end and it was also part of the reason why he's passed away. Because it got too much for him. He felt constant pressure to look good, look the part, be the character. He put pressure on his body and this is what happens. This is what happens. I lost my brother. That's what happens. I keep it simple I keep it true Oh, love I have I'll give to you I keep it easy I keep it real I remember choosing gym as a sport in grade 11 and everyone was like, what the fuck are you doing here? I was like, you're a fucking skinny punk. Heaps of people fucking question him about what he did, his actions, his motives, everything, his videos. People made fucking songs about him, everything. But you know what? He was a very strong man. He put all this aside, he didn't fucking listen to what anyone else said, and he just did his thing. That's why everyone loves him. This is a fucking revolution, bro. We're taking over. One at a time. Tomorrow, bro. You know, he inspired a generation to work out. So that is fabulous. And you know, yeah, he admitted to using steroids, but that's not the point. The point was he inspired people to work out and better themselves, improve their lives to fitness. I'm here, I swear I must have shattered the replay button just pressing 74 and what there's no doubt in my mind this was the biggest time I'd ever seen. I was like, wow. Terrace mode. I look like a pretty fucking homosexual terrace. But fuck. If you'd want to be killed by me, admit it, bro. Just say it, bro. 
Well, I'm not Ziz. Ziz is a person that took over who I am. I'm as. Ziz is a fucking spirit, bro. Ziz took over me. I'm off for show. I'm exhausted. As long as I'm acidic, it's all that matters. Touch 
the sky.